Spot Gold dropped nearly 1% today on Wednesday, and we're here to discuss this drop and future market moves with Phil Strepel, Chief Market Strategist at Blue Line Futures. Welcome back, Phil. Thanks for having me on. Phil, let's take a look at what's going on today. So if we can go to a uh, short-term chart of gold, we can see that it dropped significantly uh, starting from yesterday's close to, uh, to right now, which is 2 p.m. Eastern time. Zooming out a little bit more. Now, I know you and I have spoken before. You were somewhat short-term bearish in gold, but you expected a rally towards the second half of the summer. Now, we haven't really seen that rally yet. In fact, we've seen more of a drop uh, that start, started off in May, and uh, we haven't really recovered to, uh, 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 and to our June highs yet. So um, let's talk about today's action first, and we can talk about the intermediate-term uh, outlook. So what happened, uh, what happened this week, Phil? So specifically this week, you saw the reflation trade make a comeback. Remember, there's three or four different economic themes, reflation, deflation, stagflation, and then a Goldilocks type theme. And what you're seeing here is that the reflation trade made a big comeback. So if you look at your defensive sectors, your gold, uh, your bonds, those are both dropping. Dollar index is pulling back as well. The small caps, all those little highly shorted the 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 Mimi stocks all the the reddit stocks those are making a big comeback today the russell 2000 reaching back over that 2250 level and what that does is it, it causes everyone to start chasing small cap stocks again so that's where we've come we thought the reflation trade was kind of past us we thought it was dead the delta variant is really what spearheaded it I think that by them coming out and approving that vaccine, it brought that small short covering back into the small caps again. So we're going to have to wait for deflation and stagflation for another day, and they will come. Okay. When you say reflation trade, now, some people might say gold is part of that reflation trade, is it not? No, gold does well when you have slower glow growth or declining growth. Remember, since that last August peak, what happened? That was the bottom it was the bottom on all the economic data and it really took off from there. So as growth takes off and if inflation goes along with growth, that's where all your other asset classes, your, all your other commodities go up and the stocks go up. What's happening now is you've got the reflation trade coming back. So you've got growth going up. You've got the inflation trade is all backed off. Look at things like oil, grains, um, you know, different energies, different softs. They've all kind of pulled back just a touch. They've, they've muted their rapid rise. And now the small caps take back off to the upside again. Even look at all your mega cap. It's, it's stalling today. Things like Microsoft, Apple, um, they're all kind of pulling back today because people are rotating back into those stocks they want to chase because they don't want to, uh, to miss it. You even saw Bitcoin and Ethereum come back today. Yeah, true. So when you're talking about growth, are you talking about the economy or are you just talking about specific sectors? Yeah, the, the economy. So what, what, what happens is, is there was an expectation that economic data would be slowing. Like we've already had peak GDP and peak earnings. But when you have the um, Delta variant, when they believe that that is kind of plateaued and you have now the vaccine is completely approved, like the FDA approving it, you're gonna have more people that are gonna take it. You're gonna see more of this small, small caps will start to take off again. I'm not totally buying into it. I'm just telling you what the market perceives and the market mm -hmm. psychology perceives right now. I would take more of a short play on small caps and go back into those large caps, going farther out, be long gold, be long some silver, be long more your defensive plays mm -hmm. for the deflation we expect down the road. So you're saying gold doesn't do well when, when when there's a lot of growth, even when there's inflation. So I yeah. guess that. So I guess w what do we need? That we need stagflation. We need inflation, but no growth. Is that what we need for, yes. growth, for back, gold? Look at back test gold stagflation. What you saw in the '70s. All the old timers, they'll bring that stuff up. That's what was going on then. It was rapid inflation. Gold did really well, but the growth wasn't there. The growth was stalling. Deflation. Gold just acts as a placeholder. You park it there, and then you wait and see. That's why. That's when the dollar goes up and gold goes up together. So you really want to like, if you're gonna trade this stuff, you want to get a notebook out and write down what works under what economic 
regime and then really monitor economic data for key changes, you'll be ahead of the curve. You just can't be a permanent bull on one asset class. I mean, you could dollar cost average it forever, but I'm telling you, it's better to measure and map it. All right, so let's uh, help us out, Phil. Let's take out your imaginary notebook and let's jot down the regimes that have historically worked for gold. Which of those regimes are likely to reoccur in the future? Your, your top two coming into the back half of the year is stagflation or deflation. We all know that GDP had peaked. We know that the earnings cycle had peaked. The part where you're going to get the stagflation part where there are shoot ups in some different areas of inflation is because inventories are now starting to come back and the employment side of things are starting to come back. In the back half, you'll get the deflation. That's where the growth and inflation both start to stall. That's what the Fed is trying to somewhat create by talking about tapering. They're trying to kill the inflation trade. And that's where with those peaks in economic data, them killing the inflation trade, we go into a possibility of deflation, but that's after they announce the tapering. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just slightly confused. Are you, are you saying we're going to get stagflation first and then deflation, or are you saying we're only going get, to get, get one or the other? Per- precisely. I believe we get stagflation first, deflation second. Interesting. Okay. So you don't think that this inflation that we've seen is going to remain constant throughout the rest of the decade this 5.4 percent it's not gonna it's going to it's going to dissipate eventually yeah it, it can't it can't maintain forever things will slow down you'll see where these rising costs that had occurred they'll play a ripple effect and i mean you could take for instance like things like like hotels for instance they are going to have higher inflation on all their input costs and they are struggling with Um, getting the capacity back there. So you'll see like those are one of the first sectors to start to go. Small hotels that are in areas that might have higher COVID restrictions. You'll start to see some businesses, they're just not going to come back in as full strength as what they had before. That's where things start to compress, things start to slide back down. I'm not a complete bear on the market by any means. There's spots to be long, but it's just you need to be able to rotate into the proper sectors that work. Okay, so let's bring this back to gold then. Uh, if you're assuming stagflation later in the year, perhaps early next year, and then eventually deflation, what does that mean for the gold price? Can we see a resurgence in the gold price later in the year, and then maybe uh, uh, and then maybe um, sideways action? I don't. How does how does gold perform during deflationary environments? Actually, okay. So so with the gold, the problem that gold has right now is that. You had that massive drop that occurred that yes. shook out a lot of people. They're yes. nervous to come back into the market. Anyone who was like highly leveraged that I talked to, people that wanted to buy gold before, all of a sudden that washout occurs, they're scared. They're not coming back in. Gold has to break through key levels of resistance. We need to get above 1820, 1825, and really on a closing basis and not look back. A series of higher lows and higher highs is the best form for it. We need to go into the stagflation. You need to see small caps start to sell back off. You need to see people go into safety. They go into safety by owning those big mega cap, low volatility defensive plays. That's where I think gold does well. And you need to see interest rates start to come back down. I think interest rates are starting to ping pong. They're not breaking out to the upside, but they're just ping ponging back and forth. And then also overlooking us, you've got Jackson Hole in the Fed, and we know that they're supposed to announce some kind of tapering. The initial reaction will be that you'll see U.S. equities probably over the course of the first week, they'll sell off three to 5%. People will see some safety in gold there. What's your expectation? Do you agree with consensus? Do you think tapering is on the agenda for uh, this Jackson Hole? Yeah, so, so what they'll do at Jackson Hole is they'll hint towards it. The next meeting after that, they'll reaffirm it. And then the meeting after that, which is so it's Jackson Hole, September, and then the November meeting is when they formally come out and they have their plan. Their plan will be to cut uh, 10 10, uh, billion in in bonds and treasuries and then five on mortgage backed securities. And then it'll go from there. They'll want to end it in like 2023. So that's kind of the plan Mm -hmm. that'll occur. Now, once the plan is outlined, then the market will start pricing in whatever the next 
you know, segment of how they believe the market's going to react, or at least how the economy is going to react. And that's the cycle you need to play. Okay. But that's too far down the scope to to map out at the moment. All right. No problem. So let's uh, end the conversation on gold on this chart. So this is a one year chart of gold. As you can see, uh, we've had a slight rebound from its lows in uh, in early August. So can you fill in the blanks for us for the rest of the year? How do you see this uh, chart uh, ending by December 31st? I still think gold has a great shot of getting you know closer to like 1900 on it. It depends on how the stagflation is perceived and the deflation is mm -hmm. perceived. I think that gold's a great asset class. I think that seasonally, like over the next two weeks, so, uh, gold backtracked over the last 12 out of 15 years, done quite well. So seasonally, we come into a time when gold starts to outperform. I like gold on any kind of correction that you get as far as buying. Remember the CME launched 10 ounce, 50 ounce, as opposed to the 100 ounce. So it's easy for someone to scale in using 10 ounce gold, where it's a pure price play on the spot gold, right. and it's also physically deliverable. So it's a great product to use to scale in. All right, so later in the year, we can see a gold rebound. What about uh, in the immediate future? Uh, what, what, uh, what predictions do you have? People are wondering if this downtrend that we're seeing today, this correction can continue. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it's rebounding from here, or do you think we've still got some more uh, room to fall before it bottoms out? Our models show that the bottom end of the, the sell-off would be somewhere just above 1750. This is what current price volume volatility model would show. Now on the upside, the gold is limited to about 1825, so it's stuck in this range bound. So you need to trade that appropriate. You need to scale in at certain levels. You know, I do like 1787, 1775. These are all levels that have held. 1756, you could look at the chart, Pull up a chart, pull out your ruler, draw some lines, come up with these different levels here. You're probably not going to catch the very bottom of it, but I think that you'll be prepared for the next up cycle. Remember to always try and take some of that off. You, you, you create capital for yourself, spendable capital, by buying things when they're cheap, selling them when they're high. It's not a proxy to hold forever. You'll have some physical you'll hold forever, but trading in, in, in you know, miners, ETFs, futures are trading vehicles that you need to use to build wealth. Okay, and Phil, you submitted an article to Kitco News uh, two weeks ago, and I'm just going to read one of your paragraphs here. We firmly believe that silver presents one of the best opportunities on the heels of the seasonal tendency for gold to rally the second half of August into the first week of September in 12 out of the past 15 years. So we talked about the second half of the sentence. Let's talk about the first half, Sil silver. Walk us through your thesis here for silver. So my belief is that silver is significantly undervalued to gold right now. You look at year to date, quarter to date. Silver is one of the worst performing commodities, down about 8%. The only two things that are worse than silver right now is the lumber market and the volatility index. If you look at the, the, the tendency for gold, to rally to the end of the year based upon the economic scenario that's going to present itself, gold prices should travel higher. With silver being so far behind gold, it's like holding a balloon underwater. It should reemerge to gold and it should snap back. If you overlay the that sell-off in gold, gold had recovered all the sell-off since that, you know, that Sunday night bloodbath where silver is significantly lagging. So I think if gold has any chance of taking off to the upside, silver will follow suit. The only problem that silver has right now is that all the miners, the mining companies that did not make money because of the fact of social distancing, mines being shut down and things like that, are still forward hedging any production they have to lock in profitability. So it's the miners that are coming out that are papering the market right now. If they stop papering the market, you will see silver prices probably surpass on the ratio and keep going substantially higher. Okay. All right. Uh, we can come back and follow up on uh, silver's long-term outlook uh, in, uh, in next time we speak. Let's end on oil now. I know you follow the oil market. I've heard that oil is also a uh, either a coincident or a leading indicator for the other commodities. So how do you see the uh, oil market playing out? We still believe immediate term upside on oil is 70 to 72 dollars. Downside risk is down at 61. Um, you know, Biden had asked for OPEC to increase production. They obviously said no. They 
you know, U.S. has no say in what OPEC really does. And then, but you are keeping an eye on the Delta variant that has seemingly plat plateaued. So as a result of that, oil demand continues to outstrip current supplies. We come into a seasonal tendency towards the tail end of the year into September, where oil prices are continuously drained. And if you have any doubts about it, get in your car, drive around everywhere, <laughs> especially during rush hour traffic. You know, I, I, I was... Um... I was looking at the uh, the stagflation era of the, era of the 70s, and a lot of that was due to the oil, OPEC oil crisis. Now, we're not seeing the same thing right now. We're, we're, we're seeing inflation caused by other forces, not from oil. But let me just ask you very simply, do you think oil could spike to such a dramatic level that we're going to see huge lineups in, uh, in, uh, in gas stations? There's going to be shortages everywhere, and uh, people aren't going to be able to afford or even get gas. Do you think that scenario could ever recur? I got to tell you, living on the Gulf Coast, every time that there's a tropical storm that forms, people are filling up their gas tank and they're out of gas over here. So it's kind of kind of interesting to live in this type of, uh, of, of area. But um, oil is one of the best performing indicators coming out of uh, going into an inflation area environment. It's one of the best performers. The first thing people do, fill up their gas tanks fill up their cars and travel somewhere. So oil, I believe, could have an upside towards end of the year, closer to $80 a barrel. Excellent. Phil, thank you so much for your analysis and your insights today. Appreciate it. Yeah, you have a great day. You too. Thanks for watching Kiko News. Stay tuned for more.